Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the first uh, webinar of uh, the Worldlift Academy. Um, today we are excited to have with us uh, Teodora Petkova. And um, I mean, there is so much to say about Teodora that uh, I'm just going to ask Jason Lee. Okay, Jason Lee, who is Teodora Petkova? Theodora Petkova is a philologist and a freelance content writer with an educational background in classical studies and creative writing. Okay, Theodora, I'm sure that you can make a, a way better introduction of yourself and I'm, I'm completely counting on you and uh, uh, helping us understand how we can write effective copy on the semantic web and how we can become the best web copywriters in the semantic web world. Well, thanks for a stellar introduction. Um, I prefer to start talking about myself through my experience with WordLift. And because what you wrote here about me is perfect, but I would never be what I am now if I haven't met you and, and the plugin and all the linked data things that you're doing and creating. Uh, that was a challenge by you. You told me nobody is watching the entire webinar they are subscribing to. So we were both a challenge to create a, a one slide to go for the webinar. So here it is. Um, with this slide, I'm saying hi to all the Academy members uh, of WordLifts Academy. And I'm very happy to be the first speaker in this amazing project that you're starting. Um, let me start with, uh, with a little bit of history. Uh, my word lift story started a long time ago when I first heard about you and the team from Aaron Bradley, who is uh, an amazing SEO and who is the owner of um, uh, semantic marketing community on Google+. So I subscribed to WordLift as a better user better user and then many many semantic web thoughts and things later i ended up with writing a blog post about my experience with the plugin and my experience with uh, weaving text and data and this is the main thing we're going to talk about in this webinar um, we're going to talk about effective content in terms of data and in terms of experiences. Um, as you can see in the slide, there, there are three dimensions to effective. Which I will try to elaborate on uh, throughout the webinar. So the first thing for effective, of course, which we're all in for, is more traffic. And more traffic when we talk about the new SEO on the blog, as I named this, is about leveraging semantic search, social media, and the new librarians. We'll talk about the new librarians later. Um, effective also means immersive, immersive experiences. Because if we want to be effective, we need to persuade in a very nice, and delightful way the reader we're not we don't need to only think about data and quality we need to think uh, very focused about the reader so um, the, the last thing about effective is enriching the web of data and people that is uh, how your content is making the web a better place and how are you going to write in an environment where people are more and more interconnected more and more empowered by technologies and by the connections they themselves make be in between all this so again the umbrella thing about the webinar is that Effective writing begins with the understanding that we are uh, writing in this beautiful, super interconnected place called the web, or as you will hear me saying, the semantic web. And with that, let's move to, to talking about the, 
the environment, the new environment where um, we will be writing in. Uh, why should we understand that clear type of media? Because it is understanding the media in which we are writing our texts and texts themselves are being consumed. And here I'm sorry about the word, but I really couldn't think of a better way to express the idea that today's texts are not only read, but also listened to. As we saw with Jason, he, he introduced me and he, he was reading the text. That is, sooner or later, we as web writers will need to um, write with personal assistants in mind and with, with software agents in mind presenting different content. So, again, this understanding of an interconnected medium will bring us closer to our next effective copy on the web. And in this section, we will be looking at um, this new environment uh, for writers. Then we'll talk about SEO for content junkies. I'll tell you why SEO has become such a wonderful thing for content writers. And then I'll tell you a bit about thick soft leads and a very favorite red pencil I have in mind as a metaphor for uh, the way we will be writing in, in the semantic web. So going to the new writing environment and trying to understand it, we can, um, we can enter this topic through another metaphor. It's again, not pencil, but pen related. This image I have chosen here is a digital pen designed for the Cooper Hewitt Museum. And this pen, using the large ultra-high definition screens on tables next to museum objects, uh, is serving visitors to explore and manipulate the objects they have collected. Um, they can discover related objects uh, with the pen. They can retrieve co contextual information, learn more about designers, materials, processes. Oops, sorry watch and share videos, and uh, isn't that amazing? And this is a museum experience. Um, the reason I've put this here is because I find it a great metaphor uh, to go for our own content pieces. Uh, today's environment, the web, and all the related applications, either to do similar things with texts, uh, collect, create, curate them, anything you can think of, they are able to do with text and with content. And it is in this in environment of an empowered user that we are to meet and engage them with our text. So this is quite a challenge. And I have tried to put a recipe for this, although I don't believe in the recipes, but there are certain formulas that can get us start, started. So again, with this new writing environment, we should think about the fragmented reader. That is, readers' attention is everywhere. And they read from all kinds of channels. And everything we write should be related conceptually. Our words are to be linked to every other bit of information we're putting on the web as part of our overall digital presence. It is also useful to think about um, creating text, when you create a text, uh, as if you are weaving a small part in a bigger fabrics. And you need to, to know the, the big picture of the words that you are going to, to use and the concepts that you are going to use to engage your reader. The second thing to keep in mind in, in this new writing environment is the uh, algorithmic audience that you are facing, that your texts are facing. And um, that is, in this environment, our texts fly on the wings of algorithms. 
think search, think recommendations, think even JSON, who, who will be reading your text and presenting it to, to the searcher. Here, let me cite David Ammerland, the author of uh, the book Google Semantic Search, which I highly recommend to everyone. Uh, so he's saying your texts need internal and external linking that is semantically appropriate to your content and business goals. And with that in mind, you can't write a bad text. If you are to link internally and externally your text to words, concepts, and other content, you are in for a good start. And last in this uh, new writing environment come the um, interconnectedness. So we need to, when, when writing our effective copy, we need to bear in mind that everything converges before the eyes of the reader in all kinds of linked ways. And in such an environment, trust and consistency are paramount. We need to add as much value to our texts as possible. And we need to learn to delight our users. And speaking about delight, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, you will be surprised to see SEO from the perspective of delighting. So what if I tell you that SEO is about delight your reader? It is as simple as that. And let me unpack this a little bit. Search engines are in the business of serving the best information, the most relevant answer, the personalized result that would allow users to do more and know more. And this is, again, a key concept. Uh, effective copy starts with making your reader know more as to do more. So from that perspective, uh, the, the perspective of search engines aiming to serve the best information, uh, the optimization for search engines is actually optimization of knowledge. It is creating no more experiences. A and we need to aim for that with each of our texts and to get off a bit that abs too abstract a view as much as I love it, let me, uh, let me tell you two words. Semantic search, two concepts, sorry. Semantic search and galaxies of words. Um, put simply, semantic search is about computing. I'm still reluctant to use the word understand when it comes to computers. But again, uh, semantic search is about computing which content is best to be served based on its importance, similarity, originality in terms of the depth of experiences it creates. And of course, in terms of the links with which the text adds broader values. And by link here, I mean not only the, 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 the link we're used to, the link that links documents, um, I'm talking about links between data. And I know uh, many web writers might be a little bit intimidated by this uh, link data talk, but it's nothing to be afraid of. And we should be embracing this um, understanding uh, it's, it's easier to think about it as highly connected data or maybe as a fuel for our pencils uh, to fly at electric speed. I'm using Marshall McLuhan's electric speed here. Um, so again, I'll tell you more about linked data if you bear with me till the end of the webinar. Um, but linked data is nothing more than linked words. It's oversimplifying, but it's useful because we writers are used to think about linked words. We ourselves 
when we write a text, we are used to creating a galaxy of words. We're, we're all the time clustering words. If I'm to use the geek SEO speak for these clusters of words, these are topical hubs. And these are the, the hubs that would allow the reader to straddle the domain of the thing we're um, writing about. And this is the way we're going to best introduce the reader to the domain and to, to, to the solution of his problem at the end of the day. Because um, what is a text if it doesn't help you? No more. Again, to get back to that idea. And, from, and with these uh, perspectives, the galaxies of words and um, the, the delighting your reader and the semantic search, uh, isn't SEO bliss for the writer? We only have to just write our next best, be, best text with uh, connected content in mind. To unpack this with uh, some practical advice, um, again, on an on, on abstract level, semantic search for writers means we need to mix data with texts and dialogues, lots of dialogues. That is the engagement we need on social media or under the, the, the blog posts with the comments. And this is uh, data velocity and variety, which is really important. Um, these days, and the more contexts we can enter with our writing, the better. Uh, that is, the more uh, facets uh, we're going to create and the more ways we're going to, um, to get to the reader's attention. Which gets me to thick, soft leads, and this is a, an image I found on the web while I was preparing for, it, for the webinar. And all in all, this slide is about the interaction before the transaction and the importance of great content on the semantic web. Again, the, the semantic web is such a, an intertwingled cyberspace where more and more things are available and we are to serve best our reader by conversing with them and by, by writing really good stuff. It's again, converse before convert, talk before sale. And because there is a power arising from the innumerable ways of knowing and experiencing on the semantic web, uh, we are faced with the challenge of creating um, highly informative texts. And this might, so might sound easy, but it's not. It's, it's, um, it has to do with lots of research, lots of links followed, and lots of um, experiences provided. Again, um, when you write your effective copy on the semantic web, it doesn't and with you just posting the, the blog post or, or the product description. It, it's a dynamic thing. It will, be, uh, it will be growing like a garden and um, there, there will be branches of this all around. So we need to be prepared because effective, in, term, uh, in the context of semantic web, effective copy is the dynamic copy the copy that includes a lot of different perspectives in it. And speaking about dynamics, I can't but mention dialogues. And um, I will be happy if you look at the, um, the, the, the Clue Train manifesto. They have a new manifesto uh, where they are saying that markets are dialogues. And again, asserting that everything we do on the web should be congruent with um, our beliefs and with the things we want to talk and do with our audience. Um, 
again, that um, I have covered this uh, speaking about dialogues, but um, to recap, what would dialogues and interaction before a transaction mean for content writers? The, um, this means that effective copy on such an interconnected web is about bringing the best pieces of content to the eyes of the reader. And it is about being wise and considerate, even if, uh, even when you're curating content. And this will ignite dialogues uh, because we're not to churn out content. We are to be smart in creating spaces for this content to grow and uh, to be an environment where our readers can sink into. And uh, the interaction before transaction simply means that we need to uh, use our texts to build trust. And we need to empower our readers. And this is how they will trust us and read us more. Which gets me, speaking of more, uh, gets us to, the, to one of my favorite slides here which is the pleasure of next. And in one sentence, this section will be about the mechanics behind the, the empowerment of people to read more, know more, and ultimately do more. And here we will be covering three things. Um, the first one I have called deep down the ale. Then we'll talk about immersive experiences. And last, we'll talk about him which is a, an interaction, intertextual wink to her and is related to Andreas Jason. Uh, but we'll get to this. Uh, the, 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 entire, the entire section here is um, I created because I want to highlight the importance of highly connected content. And uh, with that, let's, let's get to the uh, three parts of this section. I just forgot to tell you that there will be handouts for every section, which will, uh, we will email you so that you can refer to them anytime you're creating content. And um, the, the handout to this section is called How to Create a Vocabulary, where you will learn uh, how to uh, use that pleasure, th that need for the pleasure of next is to engage your readers and create content that is effective on the web. Uh, so let's now move deep down the aisle. And deep down the aisle is actually how I imagine a user or our reader going deeper and deeper into our texts and the links and the things they mention. And on the semantic web, this AL and the path it leads to are, are powered by data. They are powered by highly connected data. And uh, the more we learn about that data, the better off we will be as web writers. Again, I will be talking about linked data at the end of the slides. It's not a uh, scary thing. It's just something we need to know so that we can use as a powerful tool for our texts. Uh, maybe it's obvious that I firmly believe that connected data uh, changes content creation and the cognitive processes related to it together with the experiences we're able to provide for our readers. And uh, to turn that into actionable advice, it simply means that uh, content consumption and content cognition on the semantic web are thinking about what drives our reader, what makes them click in both senses, and then writing this, just writing this. The question is how we as writers keep that narrative in a fragmented environment? And one answer, of course, is with consistency of the experience and the vocabulary we use. We can be recognizable by the terms we use and by the vocabulary we have. 
we can stand out with, with a certain way of understanding the world and presenting our domain. And of course, this consistency and this understanding, particular understanding of the world, which we manifest in our text, should be backed by structured content. Um, of, of structured content, I just want to invite you to think as nothing other but an ale with cabinets, with topics, sometimes with flying notes. And they're arranged in different order. Uh, and they can enter different arrangements. The important thing is for you to uh, get really clear about how you will structure the things you're going to talk and write about. And here, um, I want to recommend Mike Atherton's book, uh, Designing Connected Content, which is a great book, and you will um, really have um, a lot of references to start with. He's talking about structured content, not, in, not only in terms of linked data, which, of course, is useful, but uh, of structured content in terms of getting really clear what your words are and how you're going to assemble these different words into immersive experiences. And uh, with using the pleasure of next and what I call fluid text, again, I want to invite you to do something else, um, to um, think about your text as a part of the pleasure of next experience and a part of uh, the pleasure and the power of link. So, um, again, link in terms of uh, link to documents, of course, but also in terms of links to other data points and links in terms of portals for new experiences. And in a way, um, in this way, each word would become a, a window to, to the next galaxy of meaning, a fluid entity ready to reassemble as an informational kaleidoscope, which is absolutely doable uh, in, in the new writing environment we're creating texts at. And uh, this is the sole uh, desired immersive experience made of. And this is our digital asset. And it should be our digital asset. asset. And the reason I'm saying digital asset and not just website is because um, uh, the link and the linked content empowers not only the navigation between websites and pages, but it also gives the word the ability to be recognizable by other content creators or interfaces, uh, different than a web page. For example, an assistant or a search engine which wants to render results directly in the SERP or, as you saw, JSON. Which brings us to this slide uh, of immersive experiences. Uh, again, creating effective copy is, is not about thinking about the technology through which you will be uh, rendering this copy. It's thinking about how to delight your user and how to help them know more. So what would make your user, your reader, immerse in your writing? Sorry about that again. Uh, I believe immersive experiences uh, are created by casting a wider net of your content. And um, this, on, on one hand, can be um, created, this net can be created with you thinking very well about the structure of, of your text. And on the other hand, with algorithms, as Andrea called them in one presentation, our new colleagues, uh, 
which are able to pick, recommend, and surface immersive content that is relevant and informative to our readers. So if we have the structure and if we know what we want to convey as a message, the technology doesn't matter. What matters to us is um, the, the, the clear, the crystal clear idea of what do, what do we want to say. Um, and again, uh, this wider net cast not only by us, but also by, by the algorithms through which the reader can be embraced when lost in a sea of information uh, is what we should aim for when writing effective copy. Uh, and it is um, this net of connected content that we can give our readers as a springboard for them to reach their goals. To recap, again, one thing, wider net of content. And here, the premise is simple. Think about how to weave a sticky digital tapestry and work in concert with your algorithmic helpers. Um, I have covered that in detail in the handout. I, I mentioned how to create a vocabulary and uh, but just a little bit of explanation here. Think more resources. Think richer content to persuade with. And think quality text and value. So uh, immersive is not only about being able to, uh, about content that is able to um, embrace uh, the reader and make them know more. Uh, it is also about meeting the reader where they need that text. And this is easily said than done, but it works when you are when you are very clear with your structure. And and because we're talking about technology, I just want to add a at the words of uh, the inventor of the World Wide Web, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who says that the semantic web is not a technological invention, but it is a social tool. So think about content first, and then the, the technology you, you need to uh, create, to, to connect that content will come next. And speaking about technologies, Let's talk a little bit about chatbots and about personal assistance. assistance. Um, this is uh, a screenshot for, from the movie Her. You've probably watched it. It's about a, an artificial intelligence that um, is going beyond what we have imagined about machines. Um, the reason... I put it here is because J um, Andrea created his own her. He created him, Jason. And um, Jason is a technology that reads website content and serves it seamlessly to the user when asked for. And it can answer simple questions and figure out uh, what uh, the topic of the website is, for example, or uh, who is who, etc. Uh, and, and, and this is a, a very, a very important uh, thing to think about because the question is, what does that mean for us as writers? And what does that mean for the users, for our readers? Well, very simply put, it means soon we will be writing the, the scripts for Jason. And here... I just want to involve Andrea a bit to tell us more about Jason from, from a technological perspective and from, from the vision he has for Jason. Hey, <laughs> I'm here. Um, well, the, the, the basic idea of Jason Lee, it, it's um, really 
to experiment on how we can uh, talk with our websites, with our favorite websites. I think that we are kind of getting used to the idea that we talk with our fridge, or at least some of us are, uh, that we can talk with our car, uh, or that we can talk with a thermostat. But mm -hmm. uh, I've seen very little work being done so far in, in having us talk with our favorite website. And so that's really where the idea of, of Jason Lee started. And, and then, of course, um, you know, we, we have different AIs out there and, uh, and, and they are, you know, still uh, uh, very narrow. Uh, I, I prefer, you know, the, the way that uh, IBM talks about AI, which is about more, you know, augmenting intelligence, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, we, we still are, you know, working to, to, to create a bridge between one human and another human by using the technology. So rather than, you know, creating these, these you know, AIs as, as entities, uh, you know, I see these AI as really bridges that uh, help us work more effectively or, or live our life more, you know, in a more immersed way. So the idea uh -huh. of Jason was really to to start seeing you know how we could uh, we could make our own website talk. It's it's uh, also inspired by of course the the work that uh, Google has been doing uh, with um, with their uh, voice search approach. You know the the first way of voice search is all about uh, you know uh, web scraping, a technology uh -huh. that uh, that Google uses for you know um, grabbing text uh, from from your from your website. And then, and then this text is, is, is you know, um, used by, by the assistant and, 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 it, and it becomes actually a spoken word. Um, and, and so I thought, what if, what if, you know, we want more control over that experience? Because, of course, you know, a, a search engine will always, uh, you know, have to follow, you know, several rules and, uh, and will always be somehow biased by its own business model and, and logic and, and of course the, the vast amount of content that he has to process. But if, if I want to have something that it's more curated, you know, if I want you to be able to speak with your own website um, or, or your closest reader, you know, I'm, I'm a follower of your blog, Tudor, and I, I want to talk with your blog. I don't want to, you know, any intermediation between you know my my interest and, and and your content and so that's that's where Jason Lee comes comes into the picture because it's gonna be a companion that um, you can run uh, alongside Wordlift that it's gonna leverage on the structured data that uh, you create uh, with with the plugin mm -hmm. to answer as you say simple question you know at the moment we we're really focusing on the, the the work around basic intents that we see are most uh, actionable for uh, you know the the average uh, web reader so uh, as you say you know what what is this article about what is this website about uh, who is behind this website uh, you know um, what is publishing the most uh, and uh, and then of course uh, a fact base uh, a conversation who is who uh, when is the next event uh, or you know um, what is the topic that uh, uh, it will be discussed at the next events and things so on and so on and so forth based on you know the, the structured data so we follow the schema vocabulary and then out of the schema vocabulary we create uh, the, the intent so that's really mm -hmm. you know a very yeah. thing. that's that's kind of you know a, a very interesting thing to do since um, again in the context of JSON, writing effective copy is about uh, making uh, your texts talk well or clear. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, there is a lot of um, um, care that you have to put into into creating the sentences, and uh, it's mm -hmm. pretty much the same approach that uh, that uh, you described that works well for search engine so mm -hmm. content becomes conversational when uh, it's it's made of questions it's made of answers to these questions it's made of uh, simple uh, descriptive answers that provide uh, immediately 
something valuable to the user, whatever the question might be. Um, yeah, I, I really liked what you said about creating bridges. I think it's it's a, a nice metaphor for web writers thinking about effective copy uh, to think about creating bridges between their text and their user. And when this bridge is JSON, this means lots of clarity. And, and, and this would uh, be good for both the reader and the writer because they, they will really get to know that what they're talking about. Since they try to explain it, it's in super easy conversational way. I think you said uh, what I have as a recap, but, 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 but still, if we are thinking about JSON or about building bridges and creating conversational content, we should think topics and then questions and answers. And uh, what I want to highlight here is that we should mostly think about readers' time, about time well spent, be it on the screen or listening to a personal assistant. We, we need no fluff here. And we need uh, to think about our texts, our next frontier, which are the personal assistants, and uh, just be aware of these so-called new librarians. And again, to, to unpack this a little bit, uh, content consumption outside the page means making your content easy to read by people and machines. Um, minding the medium means um, not creating content for, for, for the next shiny thing, but rather thinking in concepts and not with, with one medium in mind. And that is ideating your content with many channels in mind. And again, this time well spent, I'm sure you know what that is. Uh, this is thinking about your reader first and then everything else, even data. This will, will come next. To, to write effectively in such an interconnected environment, which the semantic web is, is to write considerately. And um, because I believe preparing for the future and preparing for anything that, that is supposed to be effective starts with knowing the past, let me just take you on a quick trip in the 8050s. And with this, we will be wrapping up. And I will finally tell you what link data is about me. Uh, but first, I want you to meet the Jacquard Loom. And this machine is a device fitted to power Loom that simplified the process of manufacturing textiles. Uh, it was controlled by a chain of cards and a number of punch cards laced together into a continuous sequence. Um, the reason I put this here is because the, this Jacquard's invention has a deep, had a deep, deep influence on Charles Babbage, a mathematician and a philosopher who um, originated the concept of a digital programmable computer. And he knew of, of these Jacquard looms and planned to use cards to store programs in his analytical engine. And uh, this is viewed uh, by some authors as a precursor of the modern, compute, of the modern computing science. Um, that's quite of a story. And the reason it's here is because I love the verb weave. As I told you, my, my love story with WordLift started with the idea that WordLift as a plugin is a, is a tool for weaving data into texts and why should we weave and why I chose this verb. Uh, I chose it because it's a recurring framing for creating tape, tapestries, be these of data, of textiles, of texts, or of experiences. And these are all patterns and they again have a lot to do with being effective on the semantic web. Um, 
this is what I believe effective copy starts with. Thinking about the reader and thinking about the environment, you will be weaving together with them with elaborate care. Um, and on the semantic web, it's all about the patterns. And we as content writers, through texts, are weaving and choosing which patterns we will be uh, using to connect with the reader. And, and we must be brave. To be effective, we must be brave because the interconnectedness we can weave now um, is a lot about data and every thought and text we have can become data. And um, meaning uh, we are to, mm, you know, seek to connect dots and view words as data and um, be, be really considerate when linking things. Thinking about user experience in the first place and about um, the, the, the structured content we are to present them as to help them um, make their way on this enormous web of information. Um, speaking about data, um, let me show you something different. Uh, and this is the fabrics of you. Um, that's an art installation based on Hassan's Elahi's data. Uh, he, uh, he's a, a, an artist. Uh, who is using his data to, to show what implications each and every of our digital steps has on our fabrics, on our digital fabrics. And, and the, the, the curious case is that through data publishing, he turned surveillance on its head. He was, um, he, he was searched uh, by FBI and he decided to 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 help them to help them and just put everything he do, he does online his uh, location what he eats what he does and thus he created an enormous fabrics of data uh, so the reason I, I have this here is because we all are Hassan now and it is up to it is up to us to weave. Uh, the fabrics of data we want to show the world and we want to weave together with other people, uh, which means that we're data pieces, pieces on the semantic web, we're data pieces, we're webby, and it is all connected. And we are, our perspective, our unique content is our valuable data. And we need to weave wisely words and links and we are to weave our identities through what we put on the web and how we interact with others our texts included and of course always always acknowledge interconnectedness within our texts and um, because on the web and in cyberspace we're made of connected data there's nothing um, you know, scary uh, about this here. We're all bits of data. And it's just like before data, we were all bits of letters and thoughts. And now we're bits of links. And, and um, which finally brings me to the crazy little big thing called link data, of which I will only speak a little bit because... Um, I don't want to um, to put the stress on uh, of effective copy on linked data. Rather, I just want to say that linked data is a very important a concept to think texts through because uh, data is powerful, but linked data is even more par powerful. And um, speaking of words and links. Uh, this is the way, link data is the way we can um, make both human, uh, bo a content that delights humans and is understood by machines. 
And, and linked data is nothing more than uh, the associations machines are able to make. And um, the reason we need these associations uh, is because we want machines to serve us better. And in the context of writing, uh, it's again, linked data can be of enormous help when structuring your, your thoughts and your content. And, and again, no matter the technology, um, what matters is what we want to say, what is the story, and how is the story related to reader. Um, where linked data comes into play is um, a next step. It is where machines can assemble in a various curious, as Andrea sometimes called these, ways. Um, so linked data would help us, would help the, the rhetorical power of our texts. And uh, Andrea, if you want to, to, to say something more about linked data, which is uh, nice for web writers to hear, I think you said it all, but um, what is interesting right now, I think, for, for someone that, uh, that works on the web is that uh, linked data is not uh, as, you know, as high as, as Bitcoin, let's say, but, mm -hmm. but it's becoming more and more um, a phenomena that, that, that it's getting wide uh, and, and, and it's becoming mainstream without us knowing it. Mm -hmm. Why uh, do you think it took so long? It's a technology that has been developed for so many years. Yeah, as, as, as you, you, you mentioned Tim Berners-Lee, I mean, it's not really a technology, it's more a social tool. And I think uh -huh. that, uh, that um, when, when you have something that creates um, an impact at the social level, uh -huh. um, which is not... Um, Playing with, uh, you know, with with the with the weak point of the human being, because of course you can create an impact if you play with the with um, you know with with some aspect of the human brain or the way that we function, uh -huh. um, you know, um, a like on on an article that plays uh, with the, with the fact that uh, we all like to be appreciated by others, you know. So that's that's like uh, in a way it's 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 a it's a heuristic. It's it's an algorithm that leverage on the fact that we all like to be liked. Um, but and so that's creating an impact. But it's uh, it's kind of um, edgy in a way. Whether in in the in linked data is creating an impact, but it's 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 about building and sharing knowledge, which it takes it takes a lot more time to understand the value of it. Um, mm -hmm. It took time in the past. Uh, to create and organize and structure knowledge, um, and and it's creating time, you know, even now. Of course, the time now are very compressed, but uh, but now linked data, it's 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 becoming something so obvious that it's 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 getting spread out, and uh, and, and and we see it in search engine, we see it in websites, um, we see it in in e-commerce, um, you know, even even giants like like Amazon. Um, use part of the linked data stack and we see it in social networks yeah. um, mm -hmm. so getting into it uh, it just means that you are becoming part of you know the existing um, technological Ecosystem you know, of linked people yeah, yeah so I mean that's that, that's what I think about it yeah and it's not that scary not at all it's I mean just, I mean you don't need a to mindset we all like to be linked maybe yeah, I mean, you did, it, it was it was scary to create probably the first HTML page. I don't know. I mean, it wasn't scary <laughs> too much for me. But but I think that uh, no, it's not scary. I mean, it's 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 just a it's just a tool. Mm -hmm. But it has a social impact. Yeah. So, um, if there is a takeaway for highly connected people and data, it, it's. Yeah, the, 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 the parallel uh, in, in the context of effective copies, richly interlinked texts and thoughts. 
And I believe this is not too abstract. It is a, a starting point which can really bring us to our uh, next effective copy. And, if, uh, and by effective, again, I mean uh, bringing more traffic, bringing more civic experiences, and last but not least, enriching the web of people and data and linked data. Uh, and with that, um, I want to um, bring that webinar to its end with an epilogue. Uh, um, for which I chose the so popular answer 42 by Douglas Adams. And to write effectively on the semantic web, uh, I want you to think Babelfish. And let me, uh, let me read the, the, the quote I chose. If you stick a Babelfish in your ear, you can instantly understand anything said to you in any form of language. The speech patterns you actually hear decode the brainwave matrix, which has been fed into your mind by your babble fish. So if I am to leave you with some thoughts to inspire you to push the envelope when writing, let these be the thoughts about brainwaves, thinking and conveying messages, and the tools and the technologies we use which come next. We have mentioned this several times, uh, Andrea included. And um, I want you to just uh, think, when thinking about effective copy, I want you to think about um, linked data as a tool. And before that, I want you to be very aligned with your intent, which is to communicate and connect better and deeper, mostly through text, through an effective copy on the semantic web. Um, with this, I'm saying thank you and giving you three links to, to handouts, which you will be, you can be using uh, when going for your next big web copy on the semantic web. Thanks again for having me, Andrea, and I hope this webinar was useful for you and will make you rethink the way you, you are creating uh, web copy. Thank you, Tadora. It's been uh, amazing, uh, as uh, we all expected, and uh, we will be happy to have you again here on our um, World Lift Academy. Thank you.